Mr. Brad. I guess you're Brad. <laughs> Okay, as we began talking about having staff come back, uh, and I will say that uh, my staff has been working since March. They've been in the building. We started with uh, coming and rotating through people through. We've been working. We've not missed a payroll. We've not missed a payment. We've not done any of those things during this entire time. We've taken every measure that we've talked about this evening, and we've had folks travel. I mean, I went across the country. We had several folks travel. We had several folks. Uh, that had exposure by third and fourth parties. They stayed quarantined, they came back, they practiced the social distancing, they kept their masks on, they washed their hands, they did all the things. We wiped the copiers and all the surfaces down every time we use them. And we, I can proudly tell you that none of us have had the sickness. And we haven't taken anything back to our families. But as we began to require staff to come back, one of the biggest things that we were concerned with is what do they do with their school age or young children? If we're gonna require them to come back to work and there's no daycares open, what do we do? So the discussion at that time, we had out for RFP, the child care, the before and after care program uh, RFP. So as the committee met and began to talk about what would we do, how would we have that program, what vendor would we use, the committee began discussing, you know, what is the best one? As they narrowed that down to a single one, then they began talking with that vendor who in their response said that they could do full day. So the, that's what kind of started this whole thing. AlphaBest was the vendor that was chosen and they will comply with all Virginia COVID-19 licensing regulations. They are, have agreed to provide childcare in the elementary schools if we're requiring staff to come in from 7 a.m. to 6 p.m. during the virtual and hybrid models for ages four to 12, so school-age children. The before and after care will be provided by AlphaBest when students return to a regular day. So those hours would be 6.30 a.m. to when school starts, and then in the afternoon up until 6 p.m. So that gives you an idea of what's gonna happen with before and after care. Schools have designated and will designate separate spaces for the daycare to operate in, Child care is a priority and it will be provided in the following order. SPS staff with children enrolled in SPF schools may attend at no cost to that employee. Now this is a taxable benefit required by the IRS. So the amount of money that we pay out for that individual staff member for the child care would be added to their check, taxed, and then removed from their check as a deduction so that all, if there's no additional money taken out of their check for the amount of money for the child care. There's no money added to their, their salary for the child care. We would pay the bill centrally, but it would be taxable by the employee. Okay? So the employee has to pay taxes as if they earned that money. That is not our rule. That is IRS regulation. Then disenfranchised students and then other school-aged children. And then we'll partner to provide assistance to those students that are in that daycare for virtual learning during their day. I think Dr. Gordon's plan that he put out, a uh, letter he put out had a sample day for the daycare and there are several times during that day that students have uh, learning time that we can push in and help them with some of the virtual learning. The custodial staff of SPS will disinfect those childcare areas every day just as Mr. Napier indicated when he talked to you about the cleaning plan. It would be cleaned the same way. We're cleaning every other classroom, every other surface. The applications will be online for staff by August 7th, which is tomorrow. And there's a button on the application specifically for our staff members to fill out their, their employee ID and their children's ID for Suffolk Public Schools so that we can make sure that we're identifying them properly. The flyers and information for the public will be posted by August 10th, which is Monday. So they'll be posting that information by Monday. And there are 726 slots available. 66 slots at each elementary school that will be available. They will wait list after 66 slots are filled and then discuss with the principal and the building administration if they can provide more space to allow them to fill those wait list slots. You can see here, this is the rates that, it, not employees, but the public that would pay. Now again, this is not on the sliding scale for our disenfranchised students. This would be uh, the general public would pay one day at $40, full day. This is a full day, so please keep that in mind. This is not before and after care. 
one day for $40, two days for 80, three days for 105, and four days for 140. And again, that is school age children, four to 12. That's all mine. Good evening. Good evening. I think this is a very important part.